Justin Lawrence, to my left is Flo Smith, to my right is Jeremy Hansen, to my far right is Angelina Caprin. With us also is Dana Hadley and Diane Isabel, our treasurer, and I'm Brad Town, and we will additions and changes to the agenda, Dana. I have a few changes, Brad. Um, last time, you remember, I had on the schedule an appointment with the cemetery committee, and we had changed the date, and I missed changing it on the agenda. So I'd like to add that to tonight's agenda. Um, I would like to add uh, the catering license policy, um, catering license application policy. And I would like to add a discussion on um, a car in the Stevens branch. And that's all I have. Okay, any public comment? Hearing none, Treasurer's report, Diane? Yes, okay. I've given the select board the May budget status report, trial balance, and delinquent tax reports. Um, also, I received, we had a workers' comp audit for the year 2018. I always submit what I feel the estimates are going to be for payrolls. And when we got the audit, we ended up getting a refund of $7,660. Uh, we paid in $93,668 for the 2018 year. Uh, and the reason that we got that rebate back is because um, the, the payroll was not as high for the police as I had said it would be. And that's partly because we didn't have, it wasn't filled the whole time. So that was but it's good news, we got some money back. Uh, the other thing is the reappraisal account. I just wanted to keep you up to date on that. In FY18, we had a balance of $185,230.80. And in FY19, we received a payment from the state for $12,945.50 for a balance of $198,176.30. Uh, the assessors, and you've seen that bill, have charged $13,130 for the uh, mobile homes that they've reassessed and I'm paying for that. So that will leave us a balance in the reappraisal of account of $185,046.30, just to make you aware of that. And you heard from the, uh, what they would consider the uh, cost of a reappraisal? For? The town? Uh, no. Nope. They haven't not suggested a reappraisal. No, I, I realize that I have sent CLA. Yeah, right. um, I have not asked them that question. I'd be glad to. I was just wondering if uh, we paid how much a parcel? 65 for, per 65 mobile home. for a mobile home. So I imagine we're talking more like 90. For, I'm just trying to think what the last year appraisal was in. Was it 2000, 2008? 2008. 8, yeah. 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 And I'm just trying to think. We were, we were, uh, I want to say that was 120,000. I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know. Um, I could look it up for you, but I don't know. We have something, 2,000 parcels? Am I off on that? How many parcels do you know? Oh, I was like, is it 1,600? Was it? Okay. We'll get that figure for you. Yeah. I, I don't have it. Okay. And so that's all that I had on that. The other things we're going to talk about are in the agenda. Okay. And that would be probably have to give us the balance is under five dollars. You got wow. that right. <laughs> You're telepathic. <laughs> okay. So I have these. I'd like to it's they total twelve dollars and sixty two cents. I don't know if you want to look through them, but a lot of them are one cent, three cent. It's just for whatever reason somebody did not pay the right amount for their taxes. Okay, it could just be you know, transposition, or they just just picked up the wrong amount, or they didn't put the change down. You know, like mm -hmm. maybe you know, thousand, ten dollars and ten cents. They just picked the thousand, ten dollars. Twelve dollars and sixty-two cents. You have a motion on that? Yes, please. So I can get them. Move to um, forgive the balances under five dollars uh, as presented in the total of twelve dollars and sixty-two cents. Second motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. <coughs> and quick question, Diane, about the um, the check to the fire department. Mm -hmm. We usually have the one that we have to sign 
Sure. This is the one for the, uh, the last part of the year, and since they haven't finished June yet, I'll be getting something after the fact. Perfect. But I want to get this into F-119 business. Okay. And bank loan rates for the mm -hmm. highway truck I have? Did you want to, you, you want me to tell you? Sure, okay. go ahead. Don. We went to three different banks, uh, and this is based on, I think it was $150,000 for five years in payment, uh, one annual payments in arrears. Uh, let's see, when I went to Community Bank NA, uh, they were 2.85%. Uh, and then, uh, let's see, uh, Community Bank, Community National Bank, excuse me, was 2.4% and Northfield Savings was 3%, and these are approximate numbers. And we did have some confusion with community. Yeah. Is too bad here? Yeah. Um, that? We're not exactly sure. If, if She asked Diane, and I'll let you explain it, yeah. but if we were buying under state bid when Diane told her that it was for a highway truck, and of course we are buying it under state yeah. bid, and she said then it was 2%. Um, if you were to, if you had decided to grant that, I would go with the two percent. But in the event that two percent wasn't really what she meant, right? Because I would she go did quote me the two point eight five percent. We questioned that. And yeah, and she said uh, to consider is the state's highway equipment fund option, which I've not heard of before. So I would investigate that more. Which told but me I don't that she thought we were them. borrowing from the state, but not sure. I guess not. Yeah. So. I will delve into that more if, you know, if there is a decision made. That was um, the cost of the truck is two hundred five thousand. Uh, we're expecting roughly fifty thousand as a trade-in for the old two thousand thirteen truck. So we base that on a loan of one hundred fifty-five thousand. It will be approximately a yearly payment for five years of thirty-three thousand. And that included a seven-year warranty, right? That includes the, the, the uh, extended warranty. warranty, yes. Yeah. We do have, um, I'm hesitant to put any of the money that we've set aside for the culvert into a down payment on the truck, because you know, we don't know what the culvert's going to end up being. We have 200000 in that fund right now. So we are, um, I guess we're at the point that Tim is asking, are we going to order the truck or are we not? Yeah. Now, are you ready for that or, or not? So at 33000 a year, the down payment would be the trade-in. Yes. We would not pay the first 33000 until a year from whenever we took the loan, which will be in FY21. Am I right? Yes. Okay. So I it's a year that. from the loan, not a year from the delivery of the truck? Well, we would, it'd be about, about the same, the same. About the same mm -hmm. period, yeah. Mm -hmm. Community Nationals, depending on how you look at Community Bank, is the lowest interest rate. Right. But this is just estimates. You know, I'd get a firm quote before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we finance through the um, the um, scenario that we were the given lease. is like three point seven two. Yeah. I don't, I don't see it. No, I wouldn't. I don't see that. Why would we do that? Well, you mean the, the lease arrangement that they were? Yeah, and basically it's the same result. I think they were giving us this quote because we told them that we didn't have a lot of money to put in this this year. And so they were trying to have it so we didn't have to pay for it until after we'd had it a year. And it's really the same deal. Through the bank. Same deal, yeah. Mm -hmm. With less interest. With, yeah, if we do it through the bank. Mm -hmm. 
So, so as I recall, I mean, we had consensus is basically that we needed to move forward with the truck. So I don't see why we wouldn't move forward with the, with the truck and go after the cheapest interest rate. The community bank is that, and that's what we need to move forward with. So we move to um, approve starting the process for um, financing in the truck through community bank at a rate of 2%. And I second the motion. Any further discussion? If I could say something. Uh, if that 2% rate is not firm, do you want us to bring it back to you, or would you allow us to go to the community, yeah. the national bank? Yeah. So I'll, I'll yeah. amend my motion to, uh, uh, if the 2% doesn't uh, doesn't actually materialize that for the community national and, and pursue the 2.4%. Exactly that motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Uh, those opposed? Motion carries. So I'm planning then to call tomorrow and order the truck. Okay. Are you, everyone okay with that? You need know, trucks? Okay. <laughs> I know, I just want to make sure that, you know, when you pay, spend $200,000, it's good to have your bosses now. <laughs> it's been a great policy in my part. Yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> Crew, is that is that it? Yes. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. We're still looking at them? Yeah, we're still looking at them. Uh, let's see here. Okay, approval of fiscal year 19 carryovers and fiscal year 20 wages. We have, um, I'll, I'll go to the carryover first. Every year we ask you to approve anything that we're carrying over from the um, current budget. This year we've had a very expensive year. We really do not have anything to carry over with the exception of the fund that is the Berlin Community Fund that's through the police department. These are the monies that various um, citizens or businesses donate money to the police, some for a certain purpose and others for buy new vests or, or things like that. Um, we never know what the year is going to end up with because usually at the end of the year the chief may decide to buy something that we don't know about until the end of the year. So we're asking that you approve us to carry this over for an amount not to exceed $15,000. We currently have something like twelve thousand five hundred dollars in, in the fund. Um, so I move that we carry over the amount not to exceed fifteen thousand dollars from the Berlin Community Fund. I second that motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. The wages for FY20, um, and I am talking about non-union employees, the union employees, um, that's a contract, so we're rather committed to that. Um, the budget was anticipated at a 2% raise for non-union employees. I've given you a list of the, um, the updated wages, and if you are so inclined to improve that, we like to have that approved before we start paying people. We need to set the fiscal year 20 rate, A rate, um, to those values as presented. I need to second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries and. And Donahue. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Thank you. Have a good evening, Diane. Hello. Hi. Thank you very much for the invitation. And I, I did ask uh, Ken Gosson to come on over and join me this evening as your other representative. Um, happy to chat. And um, I, I don't really know what, um, what you're asking me here for, other than a reference to at 46, um, and so 
probably the best thing I can do is just hear what your questions are and not have a lot of answers, but get them for you. Well, one of the things I noticed uh, when we met with the school board and whatnot, there seems to be a lot of confusion with just what Act 46 does for us. <laughs> well, that's a really good starting spot. Because people don't even agree on what people thought they were going to achieve in passing it. And, and a lot of times I know that currently the media will say uh, to improve educational opportunities and to save costs. Um, you know, to re reduce the, uh, the high costs and increasing costs. And, you know, my recollection of the debate at the time was a lot of discussion about the fact that this really was not going to have a significant impact on increased costs, that the real driver was educational opportunity, that there were such huge discrepancies based on where you lived and the size of your district about what you had access to terms of um, more advanced opportunities and all those different things. And it might also um, save some money. Um, I initially voted against it because I felt we needed to be doing more about costs and that it wasn't going to do that. Um, I, um, I had to go back and, and look because some, you, you get a whole series of votes on a bill at different stages and a final bill and all that. and. Um, and, and I actually did vote for the, the final bill um, after it came back from the Senate and the adjustments and so forth. But um, um, so that was the concept that if you looked at us as a state, we had a lot of districts and a lot of small districts. And it just from a, a logic point of view, um, the size was creating a, a lot of administrative overhead where there might really be some savings and certainly more consistency in what was being offered and maybe more consistency in the per pupil cost because that's also you know a, a lot of variation around the state so i think those are some of the hopes and that that's why it was passed and i was actually surprised when i went back just to look at the numbers of, of what did happen that it was really um, more than a third of the existing districts that said it won't work for us and we need an alternative plan and, you know, this, this doesn't work. Um, I had the impression that it was more, but, but it was actually, when I, I, I checked the numbers, we, we had 247 districts around the state in terms of school, existing school districts of all different sizes, and 154 of them at some stage over those several years process went through a voluntary merger process. And that resulted out of that 154 in 38 larger unified districts. So one, without knowing in detail what actually happened, one could say that that was a success if the idea was to have larger, fewer and larger districts. It went from 154 to 38. But there were 96 who did not and who developed alternative plans which were, you know, permitted under the statute. And then out of that 96, about half of them, it was roughly half-half, half of them, the, the Agency of Education said, okay, you have legitimate obstacles that really can't be surmounted and you've come up with a, with a good, different approach, whatever that is. And the other half were told, uh, no, you, you, you didn't articulate a, a good enough reason to not do it, which obviously you know, Berlin was, was one of those. Um, my concern coming into this year was, I, I thought, you know, there were a lot of people who said, well, well those, they, they didn't follow the rules and they shouldn't get extra time, you know, they were the recalcitrant. And, you know, when I looked at it, it was clear that Berlin and the other towns here followed the rules in terms of really working at it and then coming up with a proposal and then being told, okay, no, but then to say you've only got six months now to start the whole process of doing an actual merger, um, I didn't think was fair. And so I very much was in support of giving additional time. And um, the House and Senate couldn't agree on uh, who, should, who should get extra time. And so that ended up simply not happening at all. It was... Uh, um, nothing from the legislature in terms of a delay. So the, the July 1 
deadline stands. And I've seen the notices and front porch form and so forth about the, the dates in Berlin with, you know, budget votes and all those different things um, happening. So I guess, you know, on track to do what needs to get done to um, have the new, new district in place. Now, is there any penalties if it's not in place in time, or? Well, the penalties is, it, it's, um, I mean, I, I pulled up what's on the Department of the Agency of Education website, you know, what if it's not done in time, what happens? And there will be some money flow that will be able to happen for schools to open, but it will be really restricted. And there, there will be real detriments in terms of keeping things functioning if it doesn't happen pretty quickly after that, missing that deadline. So it's, it's a little, you know, I, I mean, I printed it off and I found it not that easy to follow. Um, the, the Department of Taxes will assign an interim homestead rate of $1 to the district and it'll be divided by the CLA. So the taxes will be collected um, and sent to the Ed Fund. Um, the, there's a 25% of the base education amount would be available to the new union district. Um, as of September 10th. So they would get this, you know, some money flow, but, but not really until they had an actual budget, not actually a, you know, full budget, so. Are we saying, Anne, that if the budget doesn't pass, yeah. Excuse me, because I'm having a hard time getting my head around this. Um, <laughs> if the budget does not pass and the town, we got that notice as well. This, um, what, yeah. what have, fa failure of a new, right. to adopt a budget. And then right. it says that you, we would charge the rate of a dollar. Mm -hmm. And then it explains what, with what happens to the money and so forth. And it, and it says um, the towns cannot disperse these funds to the new district. Right. And it goes to the Ed Fund, what's collected under so that. So we have, at some point, there's got to be a budget. This is, obviously, this is to encourage to get a budget, get a budget. Yeah. Um, we have to do a second tax billing for the correct amount? If, if mark? the yeah. budget is not in place, presumably there would that went once the budget was adopted, mm -hmm. assuming it didn't result in you know, that At some rate time, I would assume being somewhere be, different, yeah. then it would mean there would have to, I would assume, yes, it would mean there would have to be another, you know, new tax bills and okay. well, I'm, adjusted. I'm hoping we don't go there because there's a lot of ramifications to that. But right. Yeah, no, um, it cost a yeah. much, obviously cost, cost being, being a big one. one. Sure, yeah. 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 When we were at the, uh, school board meeting, there was uh, uh, the deeding of the property yeah. was a large attention getter. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that that piece is, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was wondering if you could clarify that for us. So um, the best semi-clarification that I saw was actually the explanation in the, in the newest court decision because some of the, you know, the, some of the appeals were based on the issue of how can you, um, you know, I impose debts on, you know, this idea of, of which it's the same issue if you're talking about it's somebody's property and you're being made to give it away. It's, you know, an analogous kind of thing, and and the the court was basically saying, well, local school districts actually don't carry any of the debt liabilities or assets. Um, they're actually just functionaries of the state, and it's the state that's carrying those. Well, that's all fine if you have a clean situation where it is currently the school district that owns the property, um, and it now becomes the union property. Um, it's straightforward anyway, but if the property is not owned by the school, it's owned by the town that the school sits on, then obviously it's, it's much more complicated. And that, that all goes to the issue of, you know, you can't tell people at the end of November, no, we're not accepting this alternative. Now start from scratch and figure out all these issues when some of them are really tough legal issues. 
Um, unfortunately, that's what got forced. So I, I don't, I mean, you know better than I do, obviously, at this point, where that stands for Berlin, but that's... Uh, well, if the Union District is to streamline their uh, costs and say they close a school, what happens to that property? Does it, does it revert back to the town or does the, it revert to the district? No, that is spelled out, in, and, um, and if I'm recalling correctly from having read it, it, it does revert. To, it's sold back for a dollar. Um, I just want to make sure I'm right. But, I, but that's the, the articles of agreement that were predetermined for this new union because it hadn't been done um, in, includes that. And uh, I just want to check because I know there is very specific reference. Um, it is reference transfer the of the yeah. property, right. Um, I don't think that's been ratified yet. Uh, yeah, I mean, there is a specific discussion, and, and it's if it's not going to be used for school purposes anymore. Um, I would have to find the exact spot. It's like you know, 14 pages here, but. Um, um, yeah, well, one of the, I think it was Carlos, they also put something in there. Um, they suspect they're going to be used for Okay. If it won't be, if it won't be used, then the new union district shall offer for sale the property, the real property, to the town in which it's located for one dollar. Subject to all encumbrances, uh, etc. So, explain to me subject all encumbrances. Uh, where's your lord? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I assume if, if it's, you know, if there's a mortgage on it, it's subject to the mortgage that it's sold. So basically, what that's saying is that if the, if the district were to take in use the school, any school, for collateral, then for the town to buy it back, they have to pay the mortgage on it in a dollar. Right. Uh -huh. Well, there's a bond on ours, which... Well, the district must have to take that up. The, the district takes that, the district assumes that, really? that debt, yes. Okay. Yes, the debts all become debts of the new district. I mean, that's one of the big issues of contention is if you've got one district that's got some huge debts and others that don't have any and all of a sudden they they are part of the district that has assumed that debt yeah so. and the you know the counter piece of that discussion is well towns may say well now we're having to assume somebody else's debt but actually um, you know, a significant proportion of that is being paid through the statewide education fund, not through the local taxpayers. So that that money. mitigates. But it mitigates the degree to which your your local right. tax is being unfairly um, well, it all evens out the spikes. So what I'm taking away from this is that it would behoove the districts not to get too much debt building up for any school system. But the, the new district as a yeah. whole? Yeah. Well, that's good for all of us all the time, right? Don't so too much debt? Yeah. <laughs> hmm. I'm thinking. <laughs> the uh, um, the new district when it's formed, so their first order of business is come up with a workable budget to float the education system in the budget. And how 
trying to think how far behind the eight ball we are on that one. Well, that's the vote of June 25th. Yeah. Um, to make the July 1 deadline. Right. So right. hopefully then that June passes and then there is one. Yes, so if it does pass, um, what it does for us, we have to wait at least 30 days for the election to, you know, there's a grace period, I'm not sure if I'm using the right term, but there's a period you need to wait, but we would not be able to release tax bill until the end of July, is what I mean. Um, and I'm really hoping we're not going to do the dollar thing. Um, well, that only applies if there isn't a budget passed by right. July 1. Right. So. So assuming it's passed, you, you should at least know what right. number you're working right. with. Right. I mean, we're not going to get out of it either way. So I mean, it's <laughs> part of the budget's passed. Is it? Uh, so we have this question about the sales, 5,000, we're going to go for all 500, I'm sure, in Maryland. But it doesn't matter if they're in something that's all based on the whole world. Of who comes out and works, right? Of all the towns. Right, right. Yeah. Is there anything else the state's doing for us? <laughs> doing for you? Yes. Education or anywhere else on the legislative agenda? Um. It's going to take me a while to really understand this. Uh, I, you know, I, th I think there was a, a fairly decent job at not having um, significant tax increases, which affects all the time. Um, I think there was a fairly good responsiveness in terms of roads, money for towns. Uh, there weren't, you know, cuts. Let's let's not give as much money to towns as there was. They were. Um, I'm I'm trying to think very town specific because there were a lot of, obviously a lot of action on different issues. That, that child care being one of the, the big headliners in terms of the budget, but that's not a, that's not something to, uh, town specific. Pensions. Mm -hmm. Pensions. Pensions. Working on that, but that that's what. That affects us all as taxpayers on uh, specific things for the families. I, I know the I you know, we could my little sphere when we get into our committee work is when we get and, and uh, get into the health care conversation and the um, uh, the issue of um, now I'm gonna forget the word for the kind of insurance plan, you know, is in my mouth every single day of the session, and I can't think of the word off the top of my head. But the ability to form groups um, to purchase insurance. Thank you. Association health plans. Um, that is certainly something that a lot of uh, towns have an interest in being able to um, restore, be able to purchase again. And uh, that was, uh, it, it became, the Affordable Care Act had basically eliminated them because of the rules. Um, it was a piece that the Trump administration allowed to come back into play. And Vermont basically said, we can't have this kind of border back and forth, and we can't let the Affordable Care Act be dismantled piece by piece. Uh, so even though if you took it as a single issue, there's a lot of arguments for why it should be allowed. The biggest problem with not permitting association health plans, it being smaller employers are the ones who are um, bearing the added cost to protect uh, the small group market. Um, because we can't share the cost with large employers because they come under the federal ERISA uh, protection. Um, so that means we're imposing this added cost and being able to get into an association health plan meant being able to get out of the exchange and not have to be sharing that cost. 
But the downside of allowing people out, that means that the individual and small group market plans go higher. They become le even less affordable um, than they are now. So um, the one piece that did get included in the bill is trying to come back next year with, with a, a deeper dive into are there ways that we can spread that, make the pool larger instead of um, letting some groups get out of the pool in order to um, protect their own members' costs. Well, I think I had enough of that 46 right now. <laughs> Well, and I think, quite, you know, a, a lot of the folks who were against giving some extra time to anybody, it was based on, we've, we've had enough of Act 46. Just do it. And, and I, I think that's unfortunate when there were legitimate reasons to say we need a little more time. Um, and so. Any other questions for Ian? We appreciate you explaining it. There's a lot to it. It's obvious. Yeah. yeah. And, and I'm not even somebody who, you know, it's, as we said, the committee system, the education committee are the ones who, uh, along with the Ways and Means Committee, but uh, anyway. It's not a good picture, but hopefully it's going to smooth out once it, once it happens and we're all living with it. And, um, you know, certainly in Northfield and Williamstown um, seem to be having something that's working for them and uh, functional. A lot of people were very nervous about it. And, uh, so far, it's uh, most of the issues I've seen. I, I mean, the one issue I've seen that I thought was the silliest version of we have to deal with everybody equitably is when the situation is inequitable, is not, is not a parallel Williamstown, the kids all get bused no matter how close you are to the school. And if you've been to the schools in Williamstown, you know there's this incredibly narrow, winding road with no sidewalk to get the last bit to the school. In Northfield, when you're close to the school, you've got sidewalks and nice, wide, straight roads in that vicinity. Um, but it's like, well, it has to be fair. If Williamstown's kids get bused even if they live right next door to the school, then Northfield kids have to have equal busing opportunities. I'm like, no. Okay. Anyway. Good. Thank you very much. Okay. At the end of time, and you know, feel free to get in touch with either of us anytime when there are specific questions or topics. I'm sure they'll come up. All right. Much appreciated. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. David Sawyer, appointment to the Public Books Board. Why not, David? There is an opening on public works. Um, Tom has been working with, with uh, David, who has expressed interest in being appointed. And I'll let you explain your background. Um, well, I, I served in 88 to 90 on the Middlesex Select Board. Tom Middlesex has served on various nonprofit organization boards. I'm currently the uh, president of the Western Mobile Home Cooperative. I've been working real hard on that for the last couple of years, even before the inception of the purchase. I was on that board. Uh, my background's in construction, residential and commercial, almost 40 years in the business. Uh, that's about it. <laughs> Tom had expressed that there was a place on the board and needed some people with some background, so I uh, had a little bit of time and, you know, to, to help him out. And I'm sure he explained to you what the board does. I mean, they're, they're really the overall run the water and the sewer departments. They manage the budget. Um, they are planning. There's two big projects right now happening. One is the sewer project, which is putting a line down between turns up north. And the water division is developing well, so there's a lot of good things going. So it's very helpful. Your background will be very helpful, I'm sure, to 
help with that. Yeah, actually, one from that with the last week, I think it was. Oh, did you? Okay. okay. So, so you, yeah. All right. Um, have so I'm singing for the choir. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for throwing your hat into the ring. Um, I move to appoint David Sawyer to the Public Works Board. And I second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Oh, you're on. <laughs> Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you. Cemetery people? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Come on up. I'll see you. All right. Hi, Jeff Mumford. I'm with the Berlin Bullet Cemetery. Control. And so I got on the board um, <laughs> two years ago with the Berlin Cemetery and quickly started seeing that there were quite a bit of problems going on. Um, a, they wanted me on because I do have like a granite background. That's what I do, my job, but it's far from running a cemetery. And anyways, what we're finding is we, the days of having like high school kids and, and you know, older, you know, retirees, mow lawns and stuff, those days have kind of come to an end with all the state rules and stuff. So we hired on a sexton. And with the section, of course, comes payroll, um, uh, workman's comp, all the stuff that goes with it. And we financially, right now, we're okay, but we are definitely gonna be running out of money. Um, we figured 15 years max. Um, we only bring in so much money a year, and uh, through mutual funds and plot sales and, and stuff like that, but just with the cost of employees and the cost of everything else, it's it's not sustainable what we're doing. Um, we actually had our American Funds advisor come in. He went over everything with us. After talking to him, he was, it's not sustainable. So we figured we would come talk to you guys and see if there was anything you guys, any ideas, any help, anything you guys might be able to do. We, we are, uh, Matt works in a lot of different cemeteries and uh, we, for the size of our cemetery, we're getting to be one of the only privately ran cemeteries. Um, most cemeteries now are town run. Um, and anyways, we were here looking to see if you guys have any ideas for us. Um, Please jump in. Um, I got elected as a vice president. I'm a, I grew up in Eastmont player, but I'm resident of Williston. So how did I get on the board? My grandparents are buried there. My aunt's buried there. My dad's buried there. My mom's going to be. And my nephew who was murdered, he was, he's buried there too. So I got a vested interest in that. But we don't have a full functioning board. We haven't had a treasurer for three months. That's problematic. Um, my background is I've been in the granite industry since I was a kid. I went into business with my dad in 88. When I got off active duty, I was in a guard. In 1998, I started working out in the cemeteries, installs, repairs, lettering, cleaning. I do everything. Uh, the year I retired after 30 years, my dad passed. So for the last five years, I'm all through Vermont, in New York, and I get to see a lot of cemeteries, and I get to talk to a lot of people that run them. And I ask a lot of questions, like what's perpetual care? What's it mean here? Because depending on where you are, it has a different meaning. So I wanted to get on this board. Well, I didn't want to, I got asked, and I wasn't gonna say no. But, you know, just to reiterate what Jeff has said, you know, the days of volunteers, I mean, He's a Berlin resident. I think he's him and the president, Roy Kilburn, the only two Berlin residents on the board. And we don't have a treasurer. And we went from having a contract employee who met the state's definition of a contractor. And that I don't that was before I got there, but they ended up hiring somebody they thought they were going to be able to hire as a contractor. We didn't meet the requirement. So now when you look at what that guy who does a good job for us would cost us. Now, like Jeff's saying, 
you know, it's not sustainable long term. We're not, and we're not here to bring you a problem to fix. We're just kind of bringing it to light now, so that someday some some of us come to this board and say, "Hey, we're all quitting, and we got no money. You know, here you go, catch." So we're trying to get some, you know, bring y'all up to speed. There's 11 cemeteries in Berlin, I believe. I believe the corner cemetery is probably the only private one that we have. It's probably still the only open cemetery we have in the town. So I'm not sure how you manage all the other ones. Um, but the other ones are a town department. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you, you guys are aware of the challenges when you got to keep them out. I mean, a lot of them, a lot of people have passed, or families have passed, so you probably don't get a whole lot of complaints. But, you know, a lot of people come up, come up here. And when I got on the board, I mean, I kind of just, we were dancing around about a lot of stuff. And the one thing I did is I set up what I thought our priorities were, which are respectful burials, that we still bury people up there. You know, family and lot owner interaction, whatever those may be. Um, cemetery maintenance, obviously. And then dealing with contractors like myself when I come in there so that we were doing due diligence, doing good work. Um, that we got our liability insurance, we're doing everything you know by the rules that way. So I just, you know, when Jeff brought up the idea of coming to the town, you know, to reiterate, there's not a problem right now to fix. But if this keeps going like it is right now, I mean, this this may put me behind a month in what I have to do. So I don't have time to meet. You know, I got told I don't know, maybe one meeting a year or two. Well, I don't live in the town. I have a vested interest in the cemetery, but this is becoming a lot more time consuming. I've got the skill set to, to me to kind of straighten things out, fix it, but I don't have the time or the energy, honestly, to to really pull this whole thing together. And Jeff runs a business too. Um, but we're trying to, you know, meet our priorities. It's a cemetery in the town where you guys know where we're at right now um, so that it doesn't turn into a, you know, a real problem down the road. I guess that's the best way to put it. Do you have one employee? One. One. Okay, right, right. So you're talking about the cost, the payroll cost? And well, just like to that. cover that employee and then with when we start, you know, talking about this compensation, unemployment, you know, all the other stuff, and sure. then having to take out his withholdings and make sure all that stuff is done. Um, and there was a problem last year with how that was done that I think we're going to end up having to deal with with the state because I don't think it was done correctly. How do you do this without a treasurer? It's, That's a great question. <laughs> it's, 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 we're winging it. Mm -hmm. um, how long have you been without a treasurer? I want to say at least three months. Yeah, at least. Mm -hmm. at least. Um, it really, what really kind of shocked me is this. January when we had a year-end meeting and they brought out the, the profit and loss and we were at a $41,000 loss this last year. Um, our, we have quite a bit of money in mutual funds, but obviously last year that wasn't a good year for us. So we kind of have really been getting into it and we figure right now through, through sales, plot sales, burials, and we're bringing in somewhere around twenty thousand dollars a year um, through the mutual funds on an average, somewhere around ten thousand dollars a year. But with all of that, none of it is a guarantee. And you know, as I mean, I guess no businesses you're guaranteed. But if you have an employee on, you better be pretty guaranteed that you're going to be making so much to pay that employee. And when I saw this last year, when we saw that we were at a $41,000 loss, I said, I do not want to be part of a board that sinks a cemetery. You know, that's just, something's got to be done. It, uh, it's, it's just crazy. And Matt was talking about a guy in, in one cemetery, I'm sorry, I don't remember which one, but he's an 80-year-old guy who takes care of the whole cemetery himself. And that, in the past, I think has been a pretty common thing with some of the private cemeteries. It, it's just not really happening anymore. Well, he's, he's 89, he's in Essex, he's an 89, and manages three cemeteries, and him and his 70 year old partner were putting corner posts in. Yeah. yeah. I mean, our employee is a younger guy, yeah. 
you know, he's getting paid, and you know, he does a good job for what we're asking. Yeah. But I'm in a lot of cemeteries that haven't been on the board for here. I'm, you know, I'm asking a lot of questions. You know, how do you guys do this? I, I know that in Waterbury, I think both Hope and the Center Cemetery were private at one time. And their town manager at one point, I don't know if he was prophetic or not, but it's like, you know what, we better start putting you know, a line item and start taking care of this because if we end up inheriting this, we don't want to start from scratch. And over time, the town ended up taking over those two cemeteries. So are you looking for some sort of graceful transition to this inevitable I, town taking over? I don't, I don't, Right now, it's like you said, you know, with, with, if we keep drawing the funds down, I don't know how fast that's going to go. You know, like if we need a lawnmower, it's about a ten thousand dollar expense. You know, and if you put that on top of what you're paying somebody already, it doesn't take too many of those to, to have an issue. Or if you're not doing due diligence and you're not set up to take care of your play the right way, and state gets involved, you might spend some money on stuff that has nothing to do with our priorities in the cemetery. So I guess my question is, is there is there another sort of off ramp other than the town taking this over eventually? I mean if you're if obviously if your mutual funds do really well and you can sort of balance your books, um, that might not be necessary. Well this year already, like in our first quarter, I mean we had this year's better than last year. I mean that's a you might as well go to Vegas and you know and gamble yeah, that way. So I mean with with our background we're both saying, you know, looking at this you know, with the money we got right now, you know, we could probably like keep struggling to get by, but uh, you know, the mm -hmm. lawnmower goes down. Or, yeah. And the other thing is, when they hired the current employee, you know, they hired him with the idea that he, you know, he was a contractor. He had a truck. He has all this stuff. Well, he's an employee of the cemetery now. He hasn't been getting reimbursed for the use of his truck when he had it. You know, and these kind of things. When I'm looking at it, it's like that's a lot to ask for somebody. I mean, so. So what do you see of you know, what's, your, what's the scenario? So we, we almost, well, we, we came in and, and we, we're very open for suggestions from you guys. Um, it would be great if, if you guys could talk about it and maybe throw some ideas around. And um, we, we did, you know, with the, with the funds, that's what we were really trying to get out of our fund manager was to try to figure out how much we could count on, like almost a guarantee. And he came up with maybe ten to thirteen thousand dollars a year, um, and and then again with the plot sales on the average, and that's like an average of over ten years. It was somewhere around twenty thousand that we brought in. So we're thinking somewhere we've got somewhere around thirty thousand dollars that you know we can kind of count on. But again, that's not enough to have an employee. Did he give you an idea of how long it is before you sink? That's not very good way to put it. I think, what, what did he, he said somewhere around 15 years, if I remember 15. right. Yeah. The other yeah. thing is by, like, the part of it is a perpetual care fund. <coughs> Anything that was made on black money can be spent, but that base can't be spent on, it's, it's like a burial account. It can't be spent on. We have the same issue. So, mm -hmm. so I actually do have an idea. Um, in a past job, I was an employment specialist, and I worked under contract with the state of Vermont. And um, people who are on reach-up have a work requirement. Mm -hmm. People are looking for jobs, looking right. for experience in certain jobs, yeah. and they're required to meet, I think, 20 hours a week. Yeah. So you could reach out to Vapor, or um, I, don't, I can't remember what Vapor stands for. But they have employment specialists there. They have um, at um, the Vermont Department of Labor. There's also these people that connect folks with these kinds of jobs. Right. The, the hard part with that, though, is like the guy we've got right now, I mean, you're talking about a skill set with somebody that can run equipment. Mm -hmm. You've got to dig foundations or oh. graves. You've got to make sure they're in the right spot. Because if they go in the wrong spot, that costs a lot more money to start moving people around, and people get really cranky, and it's so it's and that's that's how that's it, it's really that's, hard. That's real stuff. It does happen. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So it's hard to get like mm -hmm. I, I know Calus went through this two years ago. They were paying their guy whatever to mow the cemetery. Well, I couldn't get in there for a month until they sorted it out because once you pay somebody over six hundred dollars, 
they're not, if they're not a contractor, then you got to hire them as an employee and all the other things go along. So they, I don't know how they ended up sorting it out, but it became an issue for them. Mm -hmm. So these people are would work for free for you. They would. It's it's no cost to you, and they're covered under the state of Vermont through their insurance or workers' compensation and all of okay. those things. So um, my recommendation is yeah. to call. Department of Labor or Vapor and see who they have. And you never know because there's all kinds of people, things happen to people in life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's people with experience and they're just in a hard spot at the moment and sometimes there's a connection and you might find somebody really good. Yeah. Yeah. How's, how's the association organized? Is it a, a for-profit? Uh, it's a non-profit, I believe. 501c3. Yeah, I'm yeah. not sure what that, but I believe it's a non-profit. Okay. That's nice. What? What? Yeah. Yeah. The more I can trade. Right. I'd love to show you guys a profit and loss, find. but that uh, <laughs> I can't come up with that. So you might be able to find somebody through them as well. Yeah. There's also the employees association thing, who also do the same thing. They connect people who have these work requirements. Yeah. And I mean, there's lots of people who have skill sets yeah. that. And yeah. retired volunteers who awesome. might yeah. find something yeah. good there. Yeah. Yeah. Someone who's recently retired and has a high skill set. Right. Right. Yeah. Ready to. Yeah. It would be. It would be forward. nice at all if there was something like that. Of course, you have an employee now who is familiar with the job, and he can do the job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's an important job. Yeah. Well, that's that's the thing. Like mowing and trimming, that's a very small part of the running right. of the cemetery. Right. Right. It's more the burials, dealing with the burials, well, dealing with the foundation. The and lot owners. And right. Yeah, I mean, what, what kind of shocks me with the whole cemetery thing is the cemetery's a business. And you're, you're running a business. If you're the sexton, you're running that business with a little bit of guidance from the board. So he's dealing with the funeral directors and that type of Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And so. April, May to late October, November job. I which which is kind of hard too to commit to somebody to find, you know, just something that's not full time employment yeah. for the whole year too. So, I mean, that's a challenge. On Pillar used to have um, the DOC guys yes. go in and do the work. I don't right. know if that's in. the the hard part of those because we've gone, we've batted some of the stuff around. When you start comparing yourself in your private cemetery against the municipality, it's like apples and baseball bats. It's really hard to to make that comparison because they've got the city behind. Like Pat Healy does a great job down there, but he's a city employee, and then he's got workers that flex when he needs them. You know, they go back and they work for the city, but if he needs somebody, he's able to grab somebody. And he, and we, we just don't have that luxury. I mean, you have to have someone who is in charge and oversees what's happening. Yeah. Exactly. How yeah. oh, we can we talk to a financial advisor? No, we, we talked about it, but we haven't yet. Yeah, it's Edward Jones, so yeah. So you probably have to be in the But is that going to make up for a $20,000 gap? What's the NASCAR going to make a significant difference? And 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 where and that's the thing. That that's why I'm glad we're coming now because you know we're not out of money. We're not desperate yet. Mm -hmm. But it uh, the, the the one thing with putting all all of your kind of eggs in that basket is is that's never a guarantee. You know, your market can crash and bang, you're out of money, and then, then we're really in a tough spot. But it's a, yeah, yeah. So I feel like we see the kind of 15 years transition into being more involved in six months. Or, uh, I don't know. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I wish I did. I mean, one thought I have, and I don't even know if it's, you know, even, you know, would work like the guy we have right have right now. If he was hired by the town, but then when we needed him, 
we could fill out his, he could fill out his time, and then we, you know, out of the money we've got to reimburse. I don't even know if that's even a possibility or not. That way. I would suggest that maybe we have a chance to look at this and yeah. think about mm -hmm. yeah, ways that might make sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ideas that we can bring forward. Because the, the, the burials, usually because a lot of burials happen in the spring, so, you know, May, June, the guy's busy and he's mowing, he's mowing the grass. Because they're but, catching up from the week. Right. And then, you know, you've got people calling that want to make appointments, they want to do whatever. So, so it's, it, it's really hard to find, you know, someone that you can turn on and turn off if you need it. Unless, mm -hmm. unless they are retired and have, you know, the wherewithal to, to do something like that too. So. Right. Okay. Well, thank, thank, you so yeah, thank, thank you for listening to us. Thank you for, for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Swing by sometime. We'll show you around. Okay, Black Road discussion. Don't you to work on it. As you recall, um, Josh Walker was in the meeting of May 16th, and he was asking the board to um, renegotiate the agreement. Right now it's one rod or 16 and a half feet. He was asking for 24 feet, and he also asked if the town would plow and sand the road in the winter months. So basically upgraded to a class three. Um, he wasn't asking for maintenance, I don't think, but if we, I think if we plow and sand it, it has to be upgraded. Why is that? Um, well, I guess I will re rephrase that. If we wish to add it to our state inventory and get our stipend that we get from the state. Do we ever plow it all hill? No, not well. The class four, the class the class three sections, yes. The class four section, no. So how do folks get out into that? Uh, they have to go, if you live on the bottom of Rowell Hill, you go out Route 12, and if you live on this side, you come up on the cross. So those roads are simply not five? It's not five. It's just too steep for it's, 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 it's closed. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I remember it being closed. I'm just thinking like people who live there, I mean, they're, they're not plowing themselves out. I mean, we plow the road, the class three part. So in other words, everyone lives in the, no one lives in the class four part. I see that. Okay. That's the answer. Yeah. Can you get a drive off it? I recall Tim was at that meeting and then uh, he had said that he'd been up there and the way it looked, that the way it was right now, that he'd been having trouble plowing, sanding it. The way it was. Is there any upside, Dana? Uh, adding that to inventory from a financial standpoint. Anyway, frankly, I don't see it. Um, well, the, now does the state reimburse for class three? Yeah. So how that going to uh, I, I, I think I think it would be a wash if we were lucky, because that's only a tenth of a mile. I'm not even sure, probably about 400 feet, whatever. Yeah. And I remember you mentioning long term resident. I remember that when you came yeah. to school. You know, yeah. That's an upside. Yeah. They they reimburse you by the left. Yeah. Well, the next question is is there a place there at the bottom of the hill to turn the truck over? Yeah. yeah. Two, two places. Mm -hmm. And then you're out of the. There's like a big you know, flat spot right at the end and then it cuts over to um, one side of the property where that right up your permit for the apartment and the barn and then I have the other side where my house is. So it goes down and it's like a P right at the end. Yeah, so, well, if you're going to take in, if you can't maintain one class four, not others, 
Okay. So I'd like this as well. I think you're going to upgrade to class three. And, I mean, it's only one class for the greater, maybe once a year. And you said, Josh, you were, you were developing your property down there and putting in another residence? Yeah. How many residences are on the road now? Uh, three. What's the... Um, Data, what's the uh, policy on uh, private road? Well, that's not a private road, is it? It's no. a town road. No, we do, we do have a class four policy. Which, you know, we don't have a class four. We only have two sections that we very minimal maintenance. Um, one the Raul Hill Road. Yeah, and the yeah, other is the kind of club road. Okay. Well, I was thinking of um, for emergency access for vehicles. That's the trouble I'm having with it at this point. The width of it is that uh, there's been a couple times I think I mentioned in the last meeting where people go down there because it's on the GPS, so it's a short way to Northfield, and then it's on a hill and they get stuck down there. And then we'll try to get down there and someone's stuck and they can't even get to our house. Or, you know, when I'm worried about what if I need an emergency vehicle to get to my house and someone gets down there and, and they can't get to my house, or the people that I'm have potentially to rent my other property. Well, that's what I was thinking of. But there is a policy about about uh, emergency vehicles with more than is it three or more houses on a private road or or any road. I could research that. I honestly don't know because I know that I know we had one discussion about this at a right. meeting. Yeah. Oh, well, before you were here. Oh, so. that's why I didn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that. Too. I don't know what the number was. But we definitely had this conversation. Yeah. I've had it a couple of times. <laughs> so. um, but did we ever actually adopt it as a policy, though? I think we just talked about it. Well, I think there's a. There's a I'm pretty sure there's a policy about it. Well, maybe. Um, I don't know how many people going falling in GPS on the road. Yeah, it's like that. It's, 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 it's like it's a trailer truck. That's it happens all the time. A couple of few cars a week are down there turning around, lost. Uh, so we we're having a um, hard time imagining um, the town setting precedents to adopt a public road, widen it, plow it, sand it. Um, as somebody's driveway, we're, we're having we're having a hard time um, seeing that as a good use of our taxpayers' money. Um, it's a it's a driveway. Uh, when they built the house, they knew it was going to be a driveway. It's a driveway. There's there's um, it used to be more common people following their GPS down there. Uh, it's just not a thing that much anymore. I work from home. There are not multiple cars a week driving down that road. And there's a sign that says dead end right at the entrance to the road. So um, that, that's not happening. And as one of the three residents on the road, we're against it. Uh, one of the two taxpaying residents on the road is against it. And the third residence is questionable because it's a rental and it may not get rented. And the road for the uh, vehicle to pass. It's a, it's a straight shot. There's no turns. So you live before Josh, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you go past your driveway, you can meet another car, no problem. Boston by or down the So if you have a tenant down there, uh, somebody was in a pitch or somebody was stuck. The uh, traffic on that road in the past has included several of Josh's employees going to his place of business in his garage mm -hmm. and you know, wood delivery vehicles and fuel vehicles and there's never there's never been an issue. So well, I understand that. I'm taking more of the just accessing the emergency situation. It's a clear line of safety from the bottom of the top, so there's 
vehicles that are going to meet the class four policy that the town has. Um, there's no surprises in it. Um, and the only thing that surprises me is that the roads are not going to be the procedure that you need to do. For, for the new members on the board, uh, we'd just like to kind of recap the last couple of years. Um, this, this was before the board once and then again, and then the board spent a lot of time um, agonizing over any decision, neither Josh nor, uh, nor the doubts, um, really agreed with the decision. So it must have been roughly, roughly yeah. down the middle. Um, we've abided by everything in there. Um, uh, the permit holder uh, has not and, um, and has uh, routinely and repeatedly come back to the board to ask for something different. Um, and and uh, no, it's kind of sort of um, getting close to feeling like harassment. Um, and, and, um, and it takes up a lot of the board stuff. So that being said, I, my question is, what is going to resolve these issues between you guys? Is it going to be widening the road and having it maintained by the town? Or is there going to be <clears throat> another issue? What is going to resolve this issue? Abiding by the permit would um, would be perfectly fine with us. And I and I would abide by the permit if it was in the guidelines that I can live by. Um, right now, the stuff that's going on is the same stuff that's been going on in the past. There's certain natural drains that go down the sides of the town road that's there, which is not my job. It's been a town road every time I've been here, but now it's on the driveway. Um, they, they continue to keep throwing stuff in there. There's been numerous amounts of crap put in there. And I mean, real crap. When they went and picked up all their... It's a few sticks. Dog crap. They threw it all right in the ditch. And right. We, just, we've heard all of this before. It just needs to be yeah. wi wider for my access to get down to And there. is this going to resolve the issue? Absolutely. No. No, Not absolutely it will, it will resolve the issue. Because I, I've lived there for 20 years, okay. and, and, and it, it maintained the way I want to continue to maintain. And I've come to the board to try and get that, and it's all in the town, within the town, right of way. And, and, this, and uh, there's trees getting planted in the town right of way, and, and it's one of the town guidelines you can't do, put trees, brush, anything into a town right of way. That, that's not actually true. So what is going to resolve this issue? We have wider, wider space, and if the town was sandy, the sand thing and the plowing thing came about when the uh, two barrels of sand came about. I have a sand barrel, a you know, 55 gallon barrel, down right where my driveway, right, right on the Black Road, Black Cemetery Road, you know, before it goes into my driveway. Well, I don't use it very hardly at all. My wife has an all-wheel drive car, and I have a four-wheel drive vehicle. And the people that use it are the ones that go down there and get stuck. That's most of the time. I'll come home and I'll see the driveway is all sandy, and, it's, and I can see where someone had been down there and couldn't get couldn't get out. So it's kind of on a hill there, and you kind of need four wheel drive because the way you go down, you turn into my house this way or turn into my uh, apartment or down the other way, and so you don't have a good run on it to get out. So it's mainly I would like to have a wider, and, and which is also like in the town zoning, I think I'm supposed to have 25 feet of width. Okay. Anyways. So so for you, widening? Widening and uh, sanding and maintenance. the solution. What is the solution for you? Stick with the permit, leave it alone, and the antibody part. That's all we ask. So, you don't think like the adding of another rental property or another residence? Uh, 
I mean, go, going back to our previous discussions, I, I don't see how it you know, this is the board's responsibility at this point. We tried to broker this as a this um, the current um, permit as as the compromise. Yeah. Um, and I talked to other board members that were going to yeah so that was that was the compromise that we came to and I, I think I think Angelina is on to something I'm not sure that there is a resolution that's going to make everybody happy which is the, right. the, the nature of compromise but I don't think everybody was happy with it with what we came up with in the, in the first case but I also don't see us as you know as a judge who's right and who's wrong with this I mean our rights of way are pretty clear, um, and we try to resolve this the wrong way. Help the last time. Around. So my number one concern is just the this kind of to be addressed. But we need to get down there, we need to get out of there. And when I walk there, the I can see where I can be mm -hmm. So when I think about it, I think there's a couple of things that come down. I don't know if it needs to be a little bit wider, or if it needs to be a lot wider. I don't know if it's you should be able to get a kind of one way down, one way up. I think if you were to take the personal, you know, as a resolution, in my opinion, if you take the personal out of it and eliminate that, does that make everybody happy all the time? No, it's clear nobody, not everybody's going to be happy anyway. If you take the personal out of it, we say, okay, well, it's going to be town maintained so that there's not that frustration between people, between citizens, between taxpayers. Um, because either way, people aren't going to be happy. They're not happy now, they're not going to be happy after. I get it. Um, but if the town maintains it, it's town road. It takes this from coming, it doesn't come back anymore. And it also creates, a, it takes care of the safety issue, which I'm concerned with now that there's a rental down there. Is there a rental there now? They're just about done. Have you got a tenant yet? Um, not completely, but definitely have someone in mind. So just another, um, another point that I'll bring up. Um, uh, I am completely uninterested in having the town maintain that road and having a plow go the span of our front yard next to our bedroom window with the lights and the backup beeper just below our bedroom window plowing at four o'clock in the morning. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's extremely disruptive and it's unnecessary. Josh just said he's lived there for 20 years. He's lived with that road the way it is for 20 years. And we've lived there we, for almost a similar time. And, and so this is the issue for us, is we continue it. We, I just don't understand why, you know, it's worked for 20 years. You know, why, does, why, why do we have to keep coming back here? Well, I'm guessing that right now it's, in the, it's going to change if he starts putting in the rental down there. He had, he had a business running out of that garage with multiple vehicles up and down that road for years. I didn't run a business. Uh, there was storage for my tools. It was a storage place for my tools. My okay, guys would meet me on the job site. for his employees for you know, years. My people would meet me on the job site. So it wasn't a starting spot every day for work. So we'd also mention there's been some politicking about it, I suspect, uh, ahead of this meeting and perhaps others. Um, yeah, we saw you walking up and down the road. I did. I went up with Josh one day. I said I went up to look at the road. Yeah. Absolutely. He didn't stop and talk to us. Mm -hmm. uh, no. Mm -hmm. I was looking at the road. You would have been more than welcome to come out and talk to us. Well, I'm from. From my point of view, I present, I, until the, there is another uh, residence down there, I'd be more inclined just to leave it as it is. But that's my point of view. Okay. So, so what do I have to do to have someone come and say, oh, I'm renting Josh's apartment now? I mean, I have the permit, I have the place, it's all done. I just ordered the kitchen for the place. The place is about completely done. I'm just going to put the kitchen in. Well, 
Well, we can see if the traffic actually becomes a problem. I, I know it's working because I've already mentioned to you how in the winter time, where someone can't get up out of there and you're coming down, it, there's no place to go. There's a clear line of sight. And, and, and also, I'll, I'll, I'll put into something into this. This just happened a few weeks ago. Uh, my wife and I were getting back from uh, something we were doing, and we're following these guys up the hill, and they and I have my trailer on the back of my truck. They go and pull into the driveway and stop right in front of the mailbox, and I, I was figuring they were going to keep going, so I'm kind of pulling in, and they stop and sit right there for a while, and decide to get out and mess with their mail, and get back in their vehicle, and, and look at the mail, and I'm halfway in the road with my mm -hmm. truck and trailer on that sharp corner, where you can't see anybody coming anyways, but I, I don't know why it's going to be so vindictive. Why they need to, to be well, like this? I don't, I, I mean, um, uh, you know, so this is what I mean. Yeah. This I is the it, but that's part of the access width that I need, so I could have gone around them if I needed to. Isn't it? You know, um, when you do take and get the get a tenant in there, Josh, you can come back, but uh, I don't you know. know I, keep, I keep coming back. I know I've got the place, I got the permit, I got the money invested into it. What do you need me to do? Have the actual tenant come and say, oh, I'm living in Josh's apartment now, can you widen his driveway? Well, I agree with Jeremy. We need to take and see if, if, if it really is a, uh, a, a safety or anything else issue down in there. Um, you know, so you're going to wait until after something happens, Brad? The permit, the permit was uh, granted. You were happy. Well, I don't know if you were happy with it, but that's what you asked for, and now you have it, and now you're trying to change it again. I um, I wasn't happy with it originally. Yeah, I, I know it's going to be happy, but it is what it is, and I'm a little more inclined just to leave it as it is for a while longer. Any want to do a motion on this, or you want to take and just do it by consensus? I should do a, do a motion. I, I, I move that we leave the contract in place. A second. I second the motion. Any other discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. So uh, if I get a tenant, we're back at it again. Huh? Well, if you get a tenant and you've seen, if you feel you do have uh, traffic issues down there, yes, we're back at it. So can we at least have Tim or somebody go up and mark out where that? It's, it's marked out. It's already it, it, No, it's supposed to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is marked out. So, um, so I, I, I got another thing here. So you want me to abide by this permit that you're giving me to do whatever I can maintain on that road? For 60 right? So uh, Happy. what about uh, and the uh, town guidelines where they're not supposed to be throwing anything in the right of way? For so them, them, even the, the uh, uh, fence. So that case. issue is between you guys and no, the no, not well, mediators. And you guys there. are going to need to come together at some point and discuss this as adults yeah. and make a solution, resolution, whatever you need to do. Okay. Yeah. No problem. So if uh, they don't have to abide by a permit, I don't either. <laughs> Have a good night. Okay. Um, uh, approval of license permits, vouchers, and applications. I move that we approve general fund accounts payable warrant number 19G25 with checks 19283 through 19332 in the amount of $147,839.76. Also, Northfield Savings Bank truck loan payment NSB 19-18 in the amount of $5,970.53. Also, payroll warrant number 19-25 for payroll from May 26, 2019 through June 8, 2019 in the amount of $42,757.05. Also, the May General Journal and Tax Admin entries and the May Reconciled Bank Accounts for General Fund, Sewer Commission, and Water Division. Here a second. I second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. And uh, Lover's Lane Bridge being that. Well, as you know, Lover's Lane Bridge is closed. Um, I think I've explained it to you, but if you bear with me, let me just explain it again. Um, the highway department went over to remove some brush on both sides of the bridge. While they were over there, a big truck went over the bridge, 
um, and they could see the bridge shake. Uh, they were concerned, they went under the bridge and they saw that there were some issues under the bridge and they called me and we closed it right away. Um, I asked for the Agency of Transportation's bridge inspection team to come out and they came out the following day and did an inspection. Um, I have several pictures of the bridge. Basically, it boils down to the bridge needs a new deck. This is a deck that is a wooden, uh, it's a wooden deck that is paved over. Um, I don't know if that, and of course the pavement's in poor condition, so probably there's water getting through and, and rotting, but uh, there's one section uh, that you can see where there's a, a weak spot. Um, the bridge was last upgraded in 1994, and at that time, uh, Du Bois and King was the contractor, and I thought it was interesting because they said the bridge would have a life of 25 years, and here we are 25 <laughs> years later. Um, the inspector for the state, um, Martin Kelly, who lives here in, in Berlin, um, recommended that we could open the bridge for passenger car traffic. He felt it was safe for that, a three-ton maximum. <laughs> um, if we decide to do that, obviously we have to have the signage that's accepted by the state. Um, and I will work with uh, Agency of Transportation. We put it on their website or there's, there's a procedure, which of course Flo knows I'm, I'd have to have Shauna help me um, do what it is I have to do. Um, and that's the short term and of course the long term is to apply for a bridge grant and to make arrangements to start the process of having the bridge repaired. Now you were talking that there was a, uh, a steel beam that was broken underneath? There's a cross section. I'm not sure if the pictures really show it clearly, but in the area of the bridge that some of the wooden boards came down, it pulled the cross beam support. In the middle of that cross beam, there's like a bolt that goes up into the bridge. You know, it's like this, yep. and there's a bolt right in the middle that goes up. And it is, it, you can see that it has come away from this rock. I think the hard part is if it's opened back up, um, the car traffic, that you're still going to get truck traffic going over it. I think you're absolutely right. I mean, it's, um, it's inevitable. You know, it's. Did uh, you talk with uh, Tucker? Uh, we have not gotten that far uh, with Tucker. Um, they, uh, we've talked to them, and Tim has talked to them as far as would close the bridge. And you need to, you can't, they have to go to Chandler Road from Route 12 because they can't go the other way because of the, uh, the covered bridge in Northfield. Um, which Ken is looking at me, but uh, we said go that way, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> great. However, um, but we haven't done any in depth of conversation with Tucker. Um, I think that if we did post the bridge, I think Tucker would respect the, um, the posting. I do agree with Flo that you never know when you have, you know, whether people, people do things that are pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> well, and, and given that we've posted other roads before close to certain traffic, and that's not, not stopped people in the past. Either. Well, you know, when we do Crosstown Road, we've had, I mean, unbelievable. When, when, uh, do you have any of the previous bridge inspections? I tried to find that online, and because the last one they tell me was done in 2018. So I'm curious of what it looked like that. I do not have that right now. But uh, does, it, does Martin, Martin have that? Um, well, the state has it, and I've asked mm -hmm. for it. Mm -hmm. um, well, you said a hard time that happened. Um, there is, on, on this report, it does talk about um, they looked at the bridge on July 19th of 2018, and the comments at that time, if I may bear with me if I read it to you, 
Rust scale and pitting continue to affect the areas of the superstructure along the deck and below. The floor beams have extensive rust scale with deep pitting along the flanges and rust scale has started to spread into the webs. Continued deterioration will lead to small perforations. A project to clean and paint the lower half of the superstructure should be considered. Um, now, I'm not aware that we've ever cleaned that superstructure. Um, I think the biggest problem that, for whatever reason, um, we paved over a wooden deck. I think probably the reason was is a wooden deck slippery when it's wet. Yeah, probably. Um, <coughs> It does add, if you pave over it, obviously you add weight. You get dead weight on there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so this, in, in 2018, and I may not get any more information on what I have here, um, there wasn't any mention about the deck being in distress. So, I, I mean, I, I wonder, though, if, if it's really just the deck that needs to be replaced. I think it is, because the superstructure, if you what do I know about bridges? I don't mean to be. I'm not a bridge inspector. But it, it looks in pretty good shape. Um, there is, a, you know, it's all, it's all together. It's, it's just that one spot where you could see why it, why it was pulled out of where it belongs. So some cleaning and painting and then, then redecking. You know, I think that a new deck and have that, the rust removed and cleaned and painted and, and whatever they do to it, whatever they call that. Do, do you know the or, like order of magnitude ballpark of how much that would cost? I just I imagine we would we would or could get the grants to cover it, but we we don't. Well, there should be some money in the bridge fund. That's true. We do have money in the bridge fund. Um, I would think I would guesstimate this job would be three hundred thousand dollars somewhere in that vicinity. New deck in, uh, mm -hmm. in although. Um, Clean up the well. The trouble is, you got the river underneath it, and you're going to be in deep doo if you take and get any. Uh, There's a swing underneath there too. It was great because you can really <laughs> just take that swing and swing right into the river if you feel like it. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> but so we can, yeah. So we need to improve the swing too. Because yeah. the swing will have to be improved. Yeah. Um, but it's maybe I'm. Um, being a little, maybe that's more than it would be, but I would. Well, I don't I think so. Okay. I mean, you look at some of the taking the rust scale, and if it's very pitted, you're probably better off taking uh, have to I would at least think put a weld a piece on top to uh, strengthen it. I suppose the thing to do is to start looking for the. So I am on the, as far as making the grant application, and we'll have to start looking into having an engineer, hiring an engineer to go and, and do the engineering work. Um, I think what I'm asking the board for tonight, should we open the bridge to automobile traffic, knowing, knowing that this repair is not going to happen until, if we're lucky, next summer of <coughs> summer after. 20, how much of a how much of a hindrance is it for people to have to go around that bridge? I mean, how I'm sure it's a pain that? in the neck. I mean, other you know, it's well, send them down a dirt road for a little bit longer. You know, I mean, so I guess if you have a choice of going to the river or going to the river, cutting off further. across town road, yeah. <laughs> you know. if we got rid of cross town, it'd be like having well, to loop it's around. Not that it's not in that magnitude. Well, distance wise, yeah. it's probably fairly yeah. close to the yeah. same. It's close to the same thing. Yeah. yeah. The level is lame, just a shortcut. You know, there's probably maybe five homes on Lover's Lane itself, five or six. Right, and there's that, no real big businesses in there besides Ellie's and... No, know. I was concerned that there was a daycare center at the first house, and but when I called uh, Peg, and no, there isn't. And the only thing out of there is Tucker's. Yeah. That the only thing that I can think of as trucks would be heading for is is Tucker's. However, a pickup truck is what you know that's six thousand pounds just for the UPS. You know, or mm -hmm. uh, you know. So people who live on Chandler Road, right? This is connects to Chandler. It is. It goes. So there. where you're going to Northfield Montpelier or up Berlin, which you would go shoot up across town. Yeah, Chandler Road runs from Route 12 
right beyond Riverton in Cox Northfield Brook. to uh, Coxbrook Road right. in Northfield Falls. I, I move, this is my first move, I move to um, keep the bridge closed. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? I just, I just think it's too, too risky. I mean, again, another big load, a truck with a big load, and they're like, "Oh, I, it looks fine." Well, I almost think the the <coughs> agreement with Tucker is the loaded trucks don't go across. It's just the I empty be, trucks. I believe that is what I found out. That it's the yeah. empty trucks that would go across the bridge. Not but the empty loaded. dump truck is going to be about eighteen thousand. I would say <coughs> yes. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we will. Motion carried. We will continue along of getting that resolved. Stay tuned. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Nina. Um, okay, uh, catering, Nina? Thank you. Um, yes. You recall the last meeting I asked you about if you were willing to um, do a catering policy that would allow the clerk to approve catering applications um, for streamlining and convenience, et cetera. And I have written, I did include that in your packet, mm -hmm. um, a catering policy, catering license approval policy. And this also includes um, the uh, Alcohol and beer. It, 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 it's uh, we only can do the catering license for alcohol, um, beer, beer and wine, and, wine. Yeah. Um, and obviously this does not have anything to do with licenses. That would yeah. still come to the liquor control board. There's a minor uh, typo. Oh, in, thanks. In below the, uh, the bullet points, it says the select board has the liquor control board. Period. Berlin, period. Oh, wouldn't you know? I could look at that all night. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think we all know what you meant, so I, um, I, I move that we um, adopt the catering license approvals policy. And I second the motion. Any other discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I will remove that period and bring it to you next time for signatures. <laughs> in fact, and maybe I could do it tonight before you put it. Would you care to enlighten us on the car in Stevens Branch? Well, um, I would love to. Let me just get my picture in a row here. Are we going to see pictures? I thought, well, we have a picture. Yeah, yeah somewhere. I don't know if I have it. I didn't print it, but the, um, I found out the other day that there was a vehicle in the river. It's in the Stevens branch, and uh, I believe, and I am not really 100% sure, but somebody decided it was a good idea to drive on the ice. And when it wasn't, when it became clear it wasn't a good idea, and they are not taking responsibility for They know whose car it is. They know whose car it is. Um, and the police have been working, Officer Pacal and, and the chief have been working to get some restitution and some help with this. Um, and I have no better explanation, but some people aren't responsive. Um, and it's been there since And it's been there since the winter. Uh, they did have Bob Sunoco come and try and pull it out of there. They also had the Roach towing. Um, and, and both of those, Bob could not get it. The Roach towing, it was not safe. A&R is aware of the issue. Uh, and A&R also mentioned that there's a fine for that, and I think they'll have the same luck that we have in getting restitution. So it boils down to now the car has floated further toward Montpelier, I guess. Is it an uninsured motorist? Um, well, this comes as a shock to you, I'm sure, but this person did not have insurance. So um, don't worry that you have to have insurance to drive your car in Vermont. That doesn't matter to some people. How did we get down to Stevens Branch? Well, they were down at, I believe, at, at the trailer park. 
And the claim was the car was stolen. Uh, that the person had brought the car down to um, River Run Park to be repaired. I didn't know there was a repair service down there, but um, and, but basically they drove into the ice. Um, so where's the car now? About 300 yards down the river behind the Washington Royal building. Okay, where, 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 where is it now after the water? <laughs> Today? I don't know, maybe it's in downtown Montpelier. <laughs> <laughs> so is that, in that case, it would be great. Is it going to take a crane to get the thing out of there? I'm not, I'm not sure, Jeremy, what it, would, what it would take. Maybe, you know, whether it's in a position that someone could floss up to the car and hook onto it and get it out. It's got to go over the railroad track. Um, yeah, but with the water we've had, that car isn't that heavy. If it's in a current, it should be moving downstream. It may be harder to get to, or it may actually be easier. It yeah. looks like it was pushed up against the bank. Sorry, it looks like it got caught in the bank. Jeremy um, Justin just, showed me a picture of it. I'm surprised we haven't heard about it yet. The police department is the only one thing on my saying, hmm. hey, just a heads up. Typically. So, yeah, would you ask the chief when he knew about this? Oh, I know when he knew about it some time ago. I, I don't when, have a when, date. When, when, did, when did he notify oh. A&R about it? Um, I don't have a date, but I will ask. Okay. Also, he had Yes. Okay. Yeah. But this, so he, but he's known about this for more than a month or so. I would say, yeah. Well, that was excellent. Must have been in the, the, the winter. So I guess I get here's the bottom line is we have this car in the river. How does that become our responsibility, David? Well, I I'm kind of curious. I don't know if it's your responsibility, maybe it's a moral I responsibility. Know. You know, so uh, it's a state it, uh, you know, maybe maybe it's a state issue. They do on the rivers. Yeah. You could speak to one of our, you know, representatives. So if I'm running from the police and I jump in the river, so, then I'm now this. I have no idea. I'm don't just don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I did that real simple. Well, I don't. I, I don't see any five feet. No, there's not much more issue other than the fact we can regulate the river. Oh, okay. All right. okay, so this is just for our education, right? Okay. You know, so I think you should be aware that what happened. Could, could I make a, a polite request to the chief that if something like this happens down the road that we get a little, uh, a little heads up? I have made a polite request. It's very polite. Thank you. Okay. Um, set date for first meeting in July? Our next meeting, uh, the first Thursday in July, happens to be July 4th. And I can't think of a better night for a meeting, but perhaps, perhaps you can. Um, and I was I'm going to ask the board if they would consider rescheduling to Monday, July 1st. Sure. We had had discussion on the meeting night, and I guess I was going to ask Angelina, is oh, Thursday yeah. still the... So I have to let me, let's bring that up, because Girl Scouts is closing up, and I don't know if she's moving to another um, tier in her... You know, and I don't know, I, I'd have to ask board members, but any night would accept for Friday, of course, but Thursday is, is a tough night. Yeah. I think it's better at the beginning of the week. So nice. it's always, yeah. if, if you don't mind, and then we can bring it up to the board. It's I always definitely good. don't. Yeah. But so I will, I will post this meeting for July 1st, for the first meeting in July. Okay, uh, approval of select board minutes from 6-6. Uh, I approve that we, I make the motion that we approve the select board minutes from June 6, 2018. Second. Um, one, one minor correction mm -hmm. under um, hazard mitigation update, um, the chief's last name is Fogel. Wolf, two, Wolf, three. I make the motion that we approve the select board minutes with the corrected I will fix that when I take the period up. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Uh, any further discussion? Is his name wrong to it? It's L-A-M-P. Yeah, it should be L-A-M-P. So, uh, okay. Oh. Where's that? Yeah, there. Sure. We're moving. Short of land. L-A-M-S-O-N. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Do I have a motion with noted corrections? I move that the improvements are the previous noted corrections. I second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Um, so, uh, town administrative report, Dana? I have a few things, just a few things to advise you on. Um, the first is the exit six project that the state is doing on Route 89. Um, the exit Six ramp is now closed and will be closed to the end of the month. Um, so they have started that project and they will be rolling roadblocks will be utilized to accommodate their blasting. Um, so that has started. Um, I received a letter from the Vermont Council on Rural Development inviting the town to designate a local leader to participate in the second annual Vermont Community Leadership Summit at Vermont Technical College in Randolph. Um, I don't know if you have an interest in that. We have, a, we have, I will send this to you again. It's, we had until July 5th, I just got this. Um, what is the date of the summit? The summit is on August 12th, which is a Monday. Um, we received a letter from the League of Cities and Towns, and they are looking for nominations for the board, um, for their board, their board of directors. And did a good job telling you what the state plan is for the taxes on schools. And finally, I received a phone call today from um, Brad Slayton, who lives in Junction Road. He is interested in giving the town a piece of property that surrounds the Colby Cemetery. A little knoll. That yep. is down there. Um, I, I, I don't, I'm not familiar with that area, so I'm, I made an appointment with Mr. Slayton to go down and look at it next week. Um, Let me know when. Would you like to go on that? Yeah. Is he donating it as a cemetery? Um, I think he's. I think he just donated because he thinks it makes sense to have it there. There haven't. I mean, this is an old, one of our old historic old Yeah. The yeah. stones, stones are old. Yeah. Some of the slate is. Uh, you can't. Some of the slate you can't read the numbers and or let the names in. There. Right. So I mean. There would be, I mean, it would be up to the board to accept something like that, and we would have to do some legal work. I wonder if you should uh, tell the uh, Cemetery Commission and also the uh, Conservation Recreation Board. Yeah, the Conservation Board. Okay, well, I will get that to Mr. Hanson, who was on the cemetery. Um, <laughs> yeah, half, half the cemetery commission. <laughs> um, but I think the Conservation Board should go too. Okay. Um, it's, I think it's, I don't think it's a very big, I wanted to kind of no. see what it looked like. I don't think it's a big piece of property. It, I'm trying to think how to describe it. If you were to take a mound of dirt and put some gravestones on it, you got it. It's not, it, I don't think there's probably more than 15 stones in there. Really? Mm -hmm. it, interesting place. Yeah. Sure. Sure. So I will, I will follow up with that. Um, and that work, I'm, I've got to send you and Randy an email and anyway about another issue, which is probably a bit now. So, so what is a full cemetery commission? Is it three? Um, I believe so, and you only have two. Okay. Well, I have a four. Great. So let's hope you always agree. <laughs> okay, and uh, that's all I have to grab. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, round table, Justin. Hello? I don't have anything. 
in the executive session? Not tonight, no. Can we move to this? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned.